Okay, everyone's here. Very good. Class, today we're going to start out talking about the sector of a circle. So I want you to tell me, uh, if you have a circle of radius r, what is the area of its sector? Anybody? Anybody? No one? No one remembers the answer to this? Folks, I can't understand why this is so hard for you to remember. I'm sure that if I asked any one of you to tell me the formula for the area of a circle, you would know the answer, wouldn't you? We all know the formula for the area of a circle is a equals one-half tau r squared. And that's tau, the angle for a full circle, a full turn, tau. So why don't you remember that the area when the angle's theta is just one-half theta r squared? I, I don't understand why that's so hard to remember. Students never remember that. Oh, I see a hand. Yes? Dr. Fishman, we learned circle area as pi r squared. Oh! Okay, so can I have a volunteer to just come explain to the class how you should remember sector area if you like to use pi? Thank you. Uh, so while he's explaining, let me say that today we're going to be talking about sine theta over theta. We all know that when theta gets near zero, Sine theta over theta is very close to 1. And today we're going to figure out how to prove that limit using the squeezing theorem, and we're going to start out by looking at some areas and setting up an inequality. Look at these three circles, and we can assume that they are unit circles. I would like you to figure out what is the area of the three blue shaded regions. Use your knowledge of triangle area and sector area and why don't you pause the video and write down the area of these three blue regions. Alright, the first one has an area of one-half sine theta. You can get that because the altitude of this triangle is sine theta, and the base is one, and one-half base times height. The second area is one-half theta. That's the area of a sector one-half theta r squared, where r is equal to 1. And the third one's a little trickier, but if you remember your triangle trigonometry, that the opposite over the adjacent is the tangent of theta, and the adjacent is 1, that reveals that the altitude of this triangle, the line segment that's lying on the tangent of a circle, is actually the tangent of theta. So we have three areas, and we can see that the first region is contained entirely within the second region, and the second region is contained entirely within the third region, that means we can set up an inequality. And the inequality is 1 half sine of theta is less than or equal to 1 half theta, which is less than or equal to 1 half tangent of theta. Oh, and we have a warning message flashing. This, uh, this picture shows angles in quadrant 1, so the inequality that I've just written only is guaranteed to work in quadrant one. Now, we're going to take these inequalities and do a little bit of algebraic manipulation so that they have sine theta over theta in them. And I'm going to skip these steps, but I bet you can visualize them. I'm just going to multiply by two and divide by theta, and the first one becomes sine theta over theta is less than or equal to one. And then I'm going to multiply by two and divide by theta and also multiply by cosine theta, and the second inequality becomes cosine theta is less than or equal to sine theta over theta. And you can probably guess that the next step is going to be to demonstrate that we're going to be able to use the squeeze theorem because sine theta over theta is bounded between these two things. So, we have this inequality. Uh, let's, let's just draw a graph of this to visualize the picture. Oh, remember, only in quadrant 1. So I'll draw a graph in quadrant 1. There's the graph of y equals cosine theta, the bottommost function, and then the topmost function would be the graph of y equals 1. And sine theta over theta is guaranteed in quadrant 1 to be in between those two. So since we know the limit as cosine theta approaches 0 from the right is 1, and we know the limit as 1 approaches 0 from the right is 1, all three of these functions must have a limiting value of 1 as theta approaches 0 from the right. And therefore, 
the limit as theta approaches zero from the right of sine theta over theta is equal to one. In fact, you can use similar reasoning on the other side of zero and the two-sided limit is also equal to one. And that is such an important result for us that I'm going to write it really big on the final slide. Darn, I ran out of room. But anyway, always remember that the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta equals one.